Okay, I'm committed. I don't want to be a bad guy here. I, I don't I don't want to be a bad guy. I, I, I don't. I don't. And yet I, I find I find your actions confusing. Because I remember what was happening in August. I mean, August wasn't too long ago. It was just a few weeks ago. Right? The DNC convention came here in Chicago and uncommitted. You were forbidden. You were not allowed to speak at the DNC convention. Yet for some reason, you know, you remind me of people who have parasocial relationship or use that get really stuck on these dating apps, even though they don't realize they've been ghosted. And, and, and yet I, I, I don't want to call you guys morons, but your leadership is acting like morons, uncommitted. Please live by your name, uncommitted. Okay. So they got, they made a video statement yesterday. And I, and I say this out of love, but look, the Democratic Party doesn't like you, okay? They're going to leave you on red. They're going to leave you ignored. They're going to abandon you. And if you didn't take that hint from what the DNC did to you in Chicago, then you're leading your followers into an epic fail of a disaster. So let's go and pull up this video here. Hey, and what our movement has planned over the next four years. My dad came to this country as an immigrant from Palestine. He moved to Detroit, Michigan, worked as an auto worker on Ford uh, Motor Company's assembly line. And that's where my dad really learned about the tenets of the Democratic Party and then instilling in that in all of us kids, Arab Americans and Muslim Americans. And I think most communities like minority communities and immigrant communities, we have flexed our political power through the Democratic Party. It was really- Wait, when did that happen? Oh, you must be living in a whole other different dimension or either that, you know, does anybody remember the TV show Sliders? I do, I, I thought it was a great show. Like the guy made like this remote control device that open portals into another dimensions. Cause, cause maybe she, she's from another dimension where actually there is political accountability and real representation because I I've, I've never seen the democratic party actually follow through with its values. I've seen the democratic party sell this country piece by piece, just like the Republican party has been doing too. See bipartisanship, democratic voters and Republican voters, you getting screwed up the wazoo over and over again. Really hard after October to do that. This is a watershed moment. This is a watershed moment. This is a watershed moment where, where Americans all across the country, where Democrats all across the country are saying, free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. I belong to a community that is so deeply connected to the pain that's being perpetuated right now by the policy that President Biden has championed of unconditionally funding the mass killing of Palestinians. I also happen to be an organizer in this movement, and I'm finding myself oscillating between dealing with the pain and the grief and trying to be super politically strategic and help the broader cause of both organizing to stop the war and organizing to stop Trump. The power doesn't lie within the convention. The power lies here within the people. Abbas, Layla, and I, and other uncommitted delegates across the country are going back to our base to be with our loved ones. We're going to remind them that they deserve to be heard, that they are just as much a part of this democracy as anybody else. I have probably met some of the dopest people in this movement in the last six months than I ever have in my life. Just spaces that I'm entering into where like it feels safe even if I haven't met the people. I just got brought into a space where I'm like, whoa, like humanity does exist. Like people do actually care. Whatever happens after this, like I do, I do think we're on the brink of something. Relationships have really been built across so many lines of difference. Progressive movement building, I think, is gonna be taken to a whole other level for years to come. So the, the gist of this video is they're remaining committed. And I do think in a sense, like the uncommitted movement has played a direct role in that. We have a fighting chance to stop the killing of Palestinians. And I think that's what this campaign has been about, first and foremost, is saving Palestinian lives. I know that we're one step closer. This is just one milestone in our mountaintop and Palestine is our North Star. I 
I know they're very passionate. Okay. I don't want to be kicking people while they're down, but to uncommitted, to the uncommitted voting block, you're being ignored. I, I can't take you seriously if you're going to be with the Democratic Party. All right. Even, 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 even Trump supporters can, can see that a mile away, too. And that's not saying much, okay? The Democratic Party ignored you. The Democratic Party ignored you. The Democratic Party ignored you. They didn't want to hear your voice. You know, even outside the DNC convention, when the protesters were saying the names of the dead children, you had liberals covering their ears, rolling their eyes, mocking the names of those dead kids. And you didn't speak. And yet your organization still remains committed. You, you have to look at this. Hold on. I just want to pull this video up here. Well, not, not a video, this article. All right. But uh, folks, this is still going on. The crisis in Gaza is still going on. But horrific video shows Israeli soldiers pushing and kicking Palestinian bodies from the rooftop. In the latest potential violation of international law, and boy, oh boy, what laws haven't they broken already? Israeli soldiers in occupied Palestinian ter uh, territories, footage verified by media outlets on Friday, showed members of the Israeli Defense Forces pushing and kicking what appeared to be lifeless bodies of three Palestinians off the rooftop. Uh, the Associated Press uh, obtained video showing three soldiers on the roof of that building that the IDF had attacked with grenades earlier, picking up a body, dragging it toward the edge of the rooftop before pushing it off. Another nearby rooftop soldiers in the footage are seen swinging a body by its limbs over the edge of the building onto the ground below, where a bulldozer operated by the IDF was moving. The third body was seen being kicked by a, a soldier toward the edge of the building. Ultimately, the soldier kicks the human body all the way off. Associated Press journalists and other reporters in this region uh, also told the outlet that they witnessed the incidents while Al Jazeera reported and then verified the footage. There's more. There's a lot more. Uh, again, take take for example. Again, I just want to just uh, have this uh, article up here as well. Let me see if I can find it. Here, here we go, right here. An extremely dark place in history, UN panel says Israel violated Ch child rights treaty. A United Nations committee on Thursday called for Israel for serious violations of the Convention of the Rights of the Child in the occupied Palestinian territories, particularly with its nearly year-long assault on the Gaza Strip. The outrageous deaths of children is, among the most, is, 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 is almost historically unique. This is an extremely dark place in history said the vice chair of the uh, UN Child Rights Committee, which also released its findings on five other parties uh, to the global treaty, Argentina, Armenia, Bahrain, Mexico, and Turkmenistan. Since the Hamas-led October 7th attack on Israel, Israeli forces have killed at least 41,272 Palestinians in Gaza. That number is a lot higher. And injured another 95,551, according to local officials. That number is a lot higher, too, by the way. Many more remain missing and are believed to be dead and buried under the rubble of bombed uh, civilian infrastructure. The vast majority of the enclave's 2.3 million residents have been displaced, often numerous times. Earlier this week, the Gaza Health Ministry publicly identified 34,344 Palestinians who have been killed in the Hamas governed uh, enclave as of August 31st. The document spanned 649 pages. Uh, the first 14 of which are filled with the names of babies. In total, there are 11,355 uncommitted. What are you trying to do with the Democratic Party? You know, there were other organizations that thought that they could change and maybe influence the Democratic Party. Let me introduce you to their gravestones. Justice Democrats. Brand new Congress. Our Revolution, and DSA. You really want to make a change? Break away from the Democratic Party because you don't have a seat at the table. And to the volunteers who are part of Uncommitted, 
to the people who make up, you know, the boots on the ground. You need to have a real serious sit down with your leadership. Because right now, they are not acting like serious people. If you fool me once, it's because I didn't think a guard was needed. If you fool me twice, it's because I didn't learn the lesson, so it bears repeating. If you try the same play three times running, it's because you know what's coming, and you didn't come to lead, you came to purposefully be misleading. Democracy is dry. It's been a century bleeding. The husk is gaping open to the sky out in the field where all the sheep just keep on circling and worrying and bleeding. They're waiting for the shepherd that they've tried to hide their faith in, but he's so appealing. They'd gladly give their fleece. It's such a freeing feeling that even when he leads them to the ledge and starts to urge them on, they're positively beaming. They were told that they were on their way to save democracy, so even as they plummet, they just gloat. They don't consider screaming. And halfway up the cliff, the shepherd's cozy little mittens wrap around the staff of shattered human hopes on which he's leaning. He shows the gentle grin that used to stir your inner spark, and he says, not me, us, as he gestures to the oligarchs. He knows that if he runs, they're going to stop him like a stolen car. And he'll easily surrender because it bought a lot of time for laying mines in all the grassroots. Suddenly, the tiniest of movements gets you blown apart. Suddenly, you're in a play that's set on an election day and voting for the fire unaware you're playing Joan of Arc. Suddenly, the shepherd pulls the rug and slips a hood across your clueless mug and everything goes zero dark. I'm going to warn you once more before it's 2024 and you fuck around and find out who your heroes are to take a step back from the herd and you'll learn that you can spot who all the shearers are. If you really want to know the product that they're selling, I can take you where the mirrors are. If you think your voice is finally ready, I can tell you where the lyrics are. I hid them in a box I had to bury neath the cobble when they carpet bombed the promenade and raided all the street bazaars. Now all we've got's the marketplace, and you're too broke to even bother asking what the options for your treatment are. Suddenly, the raw debris of homeless human dignity will find it has a hundred teeth for every badge and sweeper's arm. Suddenly, they speak in solidarity, and each is armed. Suddenly, the sheep can see the shepherd for his truest form and all pitch in at once to help him buy the farm. And now it's zero dark. And all is calm and peaceful, save the distant wail of sirens that approach beside the flames of dawn. Suddenly, the carrot's just a string that's on a stick, and all your movements make you sick because the prize is gone. Now, we could go and flee into the forest low and meek, or we can exercise our right to feast and go and graze on Biden's lawn. Because he's been sowing seeds that seep a toxin out to sap a bit from each of us and keep on leeching decades after Biden's gone. So regardless who they summon out of hell to come and do the job, it will not feel like Biden's gone. But in that time of hopelessness, you cannot trust the shepherd when he once again comes asking you to humor him his siren song. And it's cute that you can innocently, honestly assume that's just a symptom of a system that was wired wrong and not the standard feature, basic function, primary objective of a mass hypnosis firebomb. You don't need to know the words to cry along. Someday it'll hit you like an officer who pistol whipped their ride along, broke his jaw and kept his job and kept it moving right along. That voting isn't red or blue or black or white or right or wrong. Voting's like a firing squad where you can choose the firearm. It's slow extinction by and large. It's Super Tuesday supercharged. It's all your futures, roots and all, just tossed out on a garbage barge. It's everybody dropping out to push the biggest oligarch. It's everybody voting fire. Registered as Joan of Arc.